is that the Yetzirah, the dark side, says, pulls me away from God and says, oh, you don't have to do this for God. You're just a, you're, you're a regular nice guy. So the Yetzirah's voice is just Tara. Be nice. Just be a regular guy. You know, be a regular guy. The idea of the sign of good is it's always taking me to Hashem. Proactive for Hashem. So what's the other side if I'm not going to Hashem? That's called the Sitra, but that's called the other side. It's a very simple equation. The Balatanya taught us there's no such thing as para. It's either you're with Hashem, and what's the other option? Again, so there's no neutral. There's no, I, I don't know. I don't know means not for Hashem, because otherwise you'd be pro Hashem. Okay? This is where the Sitra Akra comes in. Pulls us and just takes you away from pro Hashem. What's very important is that you have to learn to stand up for something. When you start learning Torah, you start learning that you got to stand up for something in this world. A big thing that a person learns when they start learning Torah is that there's no say, I don't, I don't, you know, I'll just be neutral. You learn that you came here to take a position in something. So our position is very clear. For Hashem. <laughs> How do I eat? For Hashem. Drink? For Hashem. Go to the bathroom? For Hashem. How do, I, how do I learn? For Hashem. How do I conduct my affairs with my family? For Hashem. My business affairs? For Hashem. I infuse Hashem into everything I do. So if I say that, you know, when I'm learning, that's for Hashem. But when I, when I eat, you know, it's for me, you know, I, I, I want cheeseburgers, you know. And then question the kosher food, so... Or even if I don't have questionably kosher food, or iser food, I just have parf kosher food. But you know, Hashem, you know, stay out of this. When I, when, I, when I sit down for my steak and fried onions, just let me do my thing. Let me get involved, and uh, I don't want to think about you during this, this fresh fest. So, I'm sorry, you can't. That's not just the power of experience that goes to the other side. And the other side takes the energy from that fresh fest and then feeds it in to creating more God concealment in the world, Hashem Yerach. That's the technology. That's what's happening. Okay? Therefore, there's no part of it. There's no such thing as I'm just, I, I just do kosher thing, it's all fine. The question that a person has to always ask themselves is, is this for Hashem? Is this for Hashem? With Hashem? Yeah? Look what it says, V'kol, V'chein, V'chein kol adiburim. Every word, V'kol amak shavas, every thought. Asher lo yila Hashem heima, V'lirut soinoi, V'lami dosai. It's not for Hashem. Not for Hashem's Ratzon, not to serve Hashem. Shezeo perish. That's what it means. Lashem, Sitra Achra. The other side, the dark side. The dark side is not like doesn't have, you know, it doesn't have to conjure up images of Darth Vader in your head and like you know Voldemort. Ah, <laughs> it should conjure up eating a piece of kugel, kosher, mahajan, mena mahajan. But just not focusing on Hashem. Okay? Yeah, that's what we're saying here. God wants a lot of us. He wants, He made us. He's continuing to make us. And He says, the one thing that I want is that you're in a constant state of thinking about this relationship. One of the best pieces of marital advice that was given to me by Rabbi Dov Ber, Cohen. I remember I said, you know, but like, now, how do you pull this whole thing off? So he said, you really want deep inside of yourself to be thinking of your wife at all times. 
that everything you do is really to help her, for her. It is ultimately everything. You go to the store, the shop, it's all for her, to help her. To help make a, a better life for her, that she's more comfortable. You go to work in order to have parnasa, that you can provide for the family. There's this feeling of like, there's no hesachadas in a marriage. There's no such thing as like, oh, I just stopped, you know, I forgot about you. It's, it's so beautiful. This is a, a, a Scheinberg. I think it's so. A story that comes up, it's so beautiful. This is on the table. He was one of the greatest people of the generation. So it was known that he would go to Brisbane in different places. And, you know, it's like the Gadolador shows up. So he's a very popular person. And he would always bring from a bris or from whatever he went to, he would take, go to the little you know, cakes and stuff and take a little piece of cake and put it in a napkin and put it into his coat. And when he came home, he would give his wife that piece of cake. Now, is the reason why he gave his wife the piece of cake because they don't have enough cake at home? No, there's, the representatives the would be happy to make as much cake as would be, would be needed. The reason why he put the piece of cake in his pocket was a gesture of yeah, I'm the God of Lador, yes. There's a lot of stuff on my mind. But you should know, even when I was at the bris and everybody was wanting to talk to me, I didn't take my mind off you. And the cake was a, a gesture, it was a symbol of that. That even while everything was going crazy, I mean, I, you know, you were with me the whole time. So I just put that in my pocket for you. That's what we're trying to get to with Hashem, is that there's a lot going on in life. But so to speak, I always have that piece of cake in my pocket. I'm always thinking about you, Hashem. If I'm not doing that, and that's called the other side, I miss Hashem. That's Sitra Achra. Per Tzad Achra. It's the other side. She'en Tzad Akadusha. It's not the side of holiness. Holiness means I'm going towards you, Hashem. That I want a reality of you. V'tzad Akadusha Eina Ela Hashra. What does it mean, the side of holiness? is a hashra, is when God's presence comes into that place, the hamshacha, and you draw down, from the holiness, from God, you start pulling God consciousness into that finite experience, into that kubalini, into that walk on the beach, into that going to work and making phone calls and speaking to clients and running a podcast and everything. I'm bringing you in to that finite experience. I'm drawing you in because I thought about you during that finite experience. I made you a priority during that finite experience. I made you a priority. I remembered you. Like Rav Tigris Shimon, remembering his wife at the bris. I'm thinking about you. So, what happens when something is, is taking your full attention? And it deserves <clears throat> to, like the, a surgeon, the, a firm surgeon, a chef shaman, he's a doctor. But mm-hmm. it, it would, I would doctor after my surgeon was davening while he was... I hope he davens when and you can do surgery because you know you need a lot of siyat nishmaya to do surgery. Yes. A surgeon, from no matter who the person is, has six constant mitzvahs that he needs to be thinking about at all times. No matter who he is, at all times, no matter how high the position they have, they're never puttered from six spheres of consciousness that they, they need to be thinking about. And those are all revolving around God and God's presence in this moment. So yes, I hope that as he's doing the incision, and as he's cutting, and he's doing everything through the lens of everything that he learned in surgeon's training and medical school, but really he's doing it through a, that's just a glove. He's bringing God into his hand, and he's aware, he's aware that I'm making an incision and God is guiding my hand. I'm doing it through all the training that I received, but God is guiding this. So 
the foot and shoe riding so that's right on my night in Brisbane so there's a prayer that we say right before so before you do Brisbane you go train you do a lot of training and you learn and you practice because that's a minor surgery and you have to know what you're doing but before you do the bris, you say, Hashem, help me. Eliyahu Novi, Elijah the prophet, come and, 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 and be here. You're going to be right here. You, Hashem, I, I know that you're going to guide my hand. So you can't go and blindly like, never went to surgery school, okay. You know, but I'm a religious man. So uh, you know, who wants some, uh, some open heart surgery? <laughs> so, you run away as fast as you can. But I would hope that any surgeon knows that yes, I went to do my training and my shtadlis, but I need God every second right now. Mm-hmm. That happens to be one of the problems with certain practices in medicine, is because the doctors can feel so powerful. If they don't bring God into it, then they think, start to think that they're God. I had a story one time with somebody I know, a very successful heart surgeon, and uh, he does stents, and he's he's one of the best in the world, and he puts them in. Oftentimes, people have a heart attack, and he's able to open up the arteries to such a degree that now the blood can move through. So a person could be there, like Loa Leinu and Shemir Rachim dying, and and they cry out, they're like, "Oh my God." And this person told me one time, he heard that, he's like, coming. <laughs> Meaning like, I'm God. Like, I'm in a white coat and I'm, I'm going to... And it, because it's very powerful. And he caught himself. He's a God-fearing man. He caught himself and was like, if I didn't have God, I, you could really see how this would be... The stakes are very high here. Because in those positions, you have to really know that God is with you. You have to really be doing this with God. Because otherwise it would be the other side. It might be very good, but you really want to know that this is with Hashem. This is our charge. This is the mission of the Yid. Is everything is with Hashem. Everything is with Hashem. So where does God come in? Where is that dwelling place that God comes in? where we bring down God into the finite. And look at this. Excuse me. Ve'en HaKadosh Baruch Hu Shaira Ela Al Davar Shabbatul Eitz Lo Yisboa Hashem only comes to a place where the finite nullify themselves to the infinite. That's where you find contact with God. Let's just say that again. God will come into a place where the finite moves away. When the finite says that there's something much bigger, the finite says, I'm not the end of the story. I'm just an empty vessel for your life. I'm a surgeon, and I know everything that I learned in school, but it's ultimately God, you're the one guiding it. So God can fill that place. We say that these people are meditating on the mountaintops of the Mavato, and Hashem is there in this place of empty out. Yeah, it could be that he is, as long as they're being Mechavim for. If you empty out to bring a f- more, f- to bring another finite God into you, you can empty out to bring a lot of things into you. The person empties out I'm nothing, because I'm really excited to bring in another idol. I want that idol to fill me, to possess me. So you got to know, you're emptying out, but what do you want to come in there? If a person really, really empties out and says, I want the one to fill me. The one, the only one, God. That's good. That's very good. That's so, good. This is for all of humanity. The whole world can have this. Is that the kind of thing we're supposed to be doing right here, Shimon Asa? Hashem Esrei, you get to a place, you, you, it's so silent that you're like totally Nevatah to Hashem. And in that place, you're actually able to, with total bittal, whisper and bring down all the blessing that is needed for humanity. Because you're 
emptying yourself and allowing. Because you're emptying yourself, and I'm not sure if you noticed, but the entire Shmoneser is in the plural. It's not about you. It's really hard to have that kavana, but it's not, it's not about you. Try tonight on Lairi to actually not think about yourself once in Shmoneser. And actually read the words, Shma Kolein, God, I'm actually Dali. Every person's prayer should be answered. It's not about me. I'm emptying out. It's about God coming in to the world. Build Yerushalayim for everybody. This is what we're dabbling for. There's an emptying out, and God says, now I can come in. Let's just see it in a couple more lines. So whether that bittel is vain the poil mamish, whether it's like angels that are completely, in actuality, nullified to Hashem, they have no semblance of like, my own job, my own mission is separate than God. The angels don't rebel against God. It's very important. There's no power struggle between God and the angels. They don't break away. They're completely faithful servants to God. They're very real angels, extremely real. They're spiritual entities, completely real. They have a finiteness about them much less finite than us in this world. Their finitude is spiritually finite, but they are totally given to God. Their name is their mission. Their name is their mission. So Raphael, Raphael means Rofekel, the healer of God. Whenever there's a need for healing, that angel goes and heals. They're nullified to God. Just I am the I'm your healer. Whatever, whatever, if you want me to carry a healing, I will go and heal. Gabriel, the Gavura, the strength, the might of God. If you want me to carry something out which requires strength, justice, judgment, I will go and do that. So the Malach, which madness, that's why God, you see, if, if you could see the angels there would be tremendous revelation. They're not physical, you don't see them. But if you could experience, and people do, that presence, that consciousness of the angels, as people do after 120 years, people have some visions, that there is a tremendous God illumination in them. So whether the Malachim, or Bain Bekoyah, or whether those who can nullify themselves in potential, Kekoli Shisra Lamatim, like every single Yidla, down here in this world. Because every single one of us can nullify ourselves 100% to Hashem, even if we're not doing it right now, we have the potential. Why? The Messiris Nafshayam Kedushas Hashem. Because we all have the potential and the willingness deep inside that a push comes to shove, a Yid will give up his life for Hashem. If somebody says, Shoot that person, I will shoot you. The person says, I, I can never do it. I can't shoot them. And will, God said, that's a red line. I'm willing to let my life be taken. Because what you are, God, is the most important. My whole message, I'll give up my life for you, Hashem. That's, that, that means that, that's the ultimate bit, right? I'm literally willing to just totally get out of the way. So even if a person doesn't ever do that, in actuality, because he's willing to, there's already a, a God presence that is very powerful that can come to that person. The Lechein, and therefore, Amru Chazal, Shafilu Echad, Sheyoyeshev, Yoyeshev, Bat Torah, even if one person is sitting there learning Torah, because that one person is totally bottled to Hashem and has the potential and the ability and the want if I have to give my life Hashem, I will. So that one person sitting there is this conduit for God consciousness. And he's doing a mitzvah too. The call Be'asara Shechim Deshari. Even if ten Yiddos are there and they're not even doing a mitzvah. They're just hanging out. Drinking some kosher, you know, schnapps. Telling jokes, clean ones. The Shekhinah also comes. Why? Because they're not doing the Vera. Aye, but I thought you said they have to be doing something positive. The fact that there's ten 
means that they're bottled to the minion. They're nullified to something else, and they would all give their lives to, for Hashem. You hear that? Just by the fact that there's a potential, the Shekhinah comes. That's like Dabin being a minion. It's a very big thing. Like, what do you see people like that? You know, Asiri Kaidish, Maya, Maya. You got nine shoes to tell No, no. Minion. I feel all wet then. Minion. 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 Asiri Kaidish. Asiri. Because they know there's a major shina that we want to be bottled to the minion. We want to go to a larger unit. The Shechina is always there. Tomorrow, Mitz Hashem, we're going to talk about, the next time, next year, we're going to talk about what happens when a person does not want to make space for Hashem. That was all how you bring Hashem to the world. I mean, the space for Hashem. What if a person says, no, I don't want to make space. I want it just all me. I need to ask you. It's the me show. It's all about me. All about me. So that's the quickest way to push Hashem away from the world. And that's called the Sitrafa. Even if he's a, he's a nice guy, he's a tax paying citizen, a fine person. He, he, he's law abiding, he doesn't get speeding tickets, he pays his parking tickets if he ever gets one. A very fine person. But it's all about him. It's all about him. He's in the center of everything. He never made space for Hashem to come in. So he's a very fi- fine person, but his life is in the world of Sitra Afra. We should be Zoyach to be Mavatul our Ratzon to Hashem, and then Hashem will make his Ratzon 